Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. Marshall. The word motivation from motive simply means to impel or to excite. Most of us don't give much thought to what causes us to do this or that. We work to subsist. We love someone, so we're motivated to be attractive. Sometimes we are even impelled or excited by a motive. The strong desire to become a star or to become a doctor to cure a disease. Praiseworthy motives. But revenge, greed, lust are also motives. Selfish motives. And all three are in Ruth Ordway's mind as she angrily paces the living room of a luxurious condominium in Sarasota. And now my husband's accused me of stealing his target pistol. I wish I had. I wish the old creep was dead. Why did I ever marry him? Because, darling Ruth, he's got a ton of money, and you're a doll with a kind of face and figure that drives a guy up the wall. So he files for divorce. So what? You've got me. A beach bum? (laughs) No, thanks, Tony. You're a dear, but without my husband's money, no way. With it? Well, who knows? So, you, uh, you wish he was dead? Hmm? Money can make wishes come true. Our mystery drama, The Last Trip of Charter Boat Sally, was written especially for Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Terry Keene and Mandel Kramer. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines, and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Some marriages may be made in heaven, but others, for instance, those between older widowers and appraising divorcees in their mid-thirties, sometimes appear to be calculated practical arrangements. He acquires a glamorous companion, and she rises to a position far removed, say, from uh, her job as hostess in a restaurant or as a part-time artist's model. Then what? After the honeymoon, they become acquainted. She finds him dull. He finds her childish. And so it is with Ruth and Cecil Ordway, who spend the winter in Sarasota. Cecil Ordway is on his way to join a fishing party on Captain Hodges' charter boat, Sally. Captain Hodges is topside awaiting his fishing party when he spots a stranger. Hey, what you doing on my boat? Looking it over, Captain. Anything wrong with that? Yeah, everything. You're Tony Rose, ain't you? You know how I feel about you. Now get your tail off here. Go on. Isn't this old tub for charter? Don't make me laugh. It's for charter for money. That leaves you out. And even if you had, I wouldn't take you out. Now move. I got a party coming aboard in half an hour. Oh, yeah? Ordway's party? Mr. Ordway and two of his friends. Mm -hmm. If he bumps into you, there'll be trouble. It's pretty handy, that target pistol he is. I wouldn't blame him none if he slugged you one of these days. (laughs) His wife wouldn't like that. I don't know the wife, but I'll be darned if I know what any woman sees in a bum like you. Now, go on, get going. How did you know I was taking out Ordway? she tell you? Sure. She hopes the old tub is seaworthy. She'd feel just awful if it sank. Yeah, I'll bet. Mm-hmm. That's what you had in mind, sneaking around? Now, shut off. Here comes Mr. Perkins. Oh, so it is. A stiff... Ordway's office boy. Number two man in Mr. Ordway's company sure ain't no office boy. Off my boat. 
Afternoon, Captain Hodges. Oh, welcome aboard, am Mr. Perkins. Am I interrupting anything? No, nothing at all. He's leaving. Haven't I seen you someplace before? Yeah, sure, with uh, Mrs. Ordway. I'm a friend of hers. Oh, yes, of course. You were the beach boy. Hey, Mr. Ordway and Mr. Gates ought to be right along. We'll sail at four. So long, Tony. Hey, do Mrs. Ordway a favor. Shove the old creep overboard. Wow. You might have rung the bell. Hmm. The door was open. I'll get my robe. And stop staring at me. And Ordway wants a divorce. Well, he has got to be crazy. Well, what happened? I looked at the Sally. Captain Hodges came along. We swapped insults. And that stiff Perkins came aboard, called me a beach boy. Aren't you? Here's the way he said it. You like him, don't you? I do. He's stuck up. Kind of fancy. He's a gentleman and very good looking. Also, he's important. A big man in business. What else happened? Mm, nothing. Your husband and some other guy went aboard and Sally cast off. I watched for a few minutes and uh, came back to see you. Is that all? Mm hmm. I've got this idea. What is it? It's better you don't know. You said you wished your husband dead. He's divorcing you and naming me, right? He wants a divorce, yes. Mm -hmm. And he cuts you off without a cent. Unless something happens to him before the papers are finalized. Well, maybe something will. But I'll need some money. How much? 2500 That much? What for? I need that much, that's all. And uh, you'd better get it for me in cash. Are you planning to do something to the Sally? Mm, maybe. Listen, I owe Captain Hodges one. He's given me a bad reputation. Uh, just get me the money and buy a black dress. Lieutenant Phillips. Yeah. What's that? A mile off K. Marco. Yeah. Why are you calling in the detective division? I see. $2,000, huh? A target pistol? Yeah. Uh-huh. That strikes me as funny, too. All right, look, uh, Frank Engel and I will look into it. We're on our way. Yes, Mike. What's up? Plenty. Charter boat Sally blew up an hour ago a mile off K. Marco. No. That's Captain Hodges' old boat. That's right. Coast Guard's at the spot waiting for the salvage ship. They'll try to raise her tonight. Two men might still be aboard, a Cecil Ordway and a Fred Gates. What about Captain Hodges? Now, he's alive. So's another man, a Mr. Perkins. They got ashore in the dinghy. I'm sorry to hear about this, Sally. Clint Hodges is an old friend. That boat was all he had. Who wants us to investigate? Coast Guard. Why? Seems a wad of money was found in a tackle box in the dinghy, almost $2,000. Whose is it? That's what we're going to find out. They asked Captain Hodges about it. He says he knows nothing. Uh, that sounds fishy. Of course, the Sally's pretty old. Sometimes they do blow up. That's right. But what about the money, Frank? They also found a twenty-two caliber target pistol under the money with two shots discharged. What? I don't connect it up. Neither do I. According to the Coast Guard... Ordway and his friends went fishing regularly with Captain Hodges. Always late in the afternoon. Apparently it was just an excuse to get away. You know, float around, pull in the lines at 6 o'clock, have a few drinks, supper, play some cards. Well, that could explain the money. How? Unless the men gambled on deck, which I doubt, the money would have gone down with the boat. Oh, yeah. Did the Sally just blow up? Good question, Frank. We won't know until the boat's been raised and gone over, and that won't be till tomorrow. Well, if it didn't just blow up, somebody blew her up. That's right. Captain Hodges? Would he sabotage his own boat? No, I can't believe it. He loved that boat. Yeah, it was probably fully insured. That's a point. So is the dough in the tackle box. Maybe it is the gambling money. You know, maybe the target pistol belongs to the captain. Put them together and you see where we come out. 
Yeah. Murder and sabotage. I just can't believe it. All right. Let's go have a talk with Captain Hodges at the hospital. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Frank. How are you, boy? How are you feeling, Captain? It's terrible. A little banged up, but that's not why. Some nice man and a Sally. Mr. Ordway is sure a fine man, and so is Mr. Gates and that Mr. Perkins. He rode me back to shore. Mm -hmm. The others, uh, uh, shots got him, probably. It was terrible. You want to tell us what happened, Captain? I'll do the best I can, Lieutenant. Uh, I was on deck. The sea was calm. The sky was soft blue. That's when I'd go below to see if Mr. Ordway wanted anything. More ice, maybe more beer, you know. Mm -hmm. What were they doing below? Playing poker. I see. Go on. And all of a sudden, there was a terrific explosion. I almost was blown overboard, but I held on to the wheel, and then Sally began to list to starboard. I rushed to the galley steps and met Mr. Perkins, who was coming up on deck. He said, let's get out of here, Captain. What'd you do? Oh, what any captain would do. I ran down to the galley where they'd been playing cards. Some water was coming in a mile a minute. Now, where were Ordway and Gates? On the floor, covered with water. Dead, I guess. Explosion killed them. Uh-huh. What'd you do then? I tried to reach them. Next thing I knew, half the Gulf of Mexico had come through the hole in the hole, and I was up to my neck in it. Mm. Surprised you weren't drowned. I thought I was. Sally listed something awful and began to sink. I dove through the hole in the side and somehow come to the surface. And there was another explosion, and she sank. I was sure I was a goner. And then I heard Mr. Perkins yelling. He rescued you in the dinghy, hmm? Yeah, that's right. I owe my life to him. Mm. Let me ask you something, Captain. Do you keep a tackle box in the dinghy? A tackle box? What for? You don't fish from a dinghy? They found your tackle box in the dinghy, Captain. What? That don't make sense, Lieutenant. They found some other things, too. Like what? Almost $2,000 in cash. Huh? Well, whose? I don't have 200 to my name. Now, what you saying? My tackle box in the dinghy had cash money in it? Well, who put it there? That's what we'd like to know. Hey, now, what are you driving at? Captain, do you own a twenty-two caliber target pistol? Well, sure. You get a really big fish, sometimes you have to shoot him. I see. You consider Mr. Ordway a big fish? Huh? Mr. Ordway? A pistol was found with that money, Captain, and it had been fired twice. Well, I ain't used my gun in weeks. Anybody else have one? Mr. Ordway, we'd set out a small cork buoy once in a while, and he'd take pot shots at it, but... No, oh, not this trip. I'll be damned. Tony Rose. Who? That beach bum was always hanging around Mrs. Ordway. I caught him sneaking around aboard Sally half an hour before we set sail... Dirty little... He wants to come down to sabotage the boat. Why would he want to do that? Mr. Ordway was suing his wife for divorce and naming that bomb as correspondent. If he kills Ordway, she inherits the money and gets Tony. He did it. Just the kind of rotten trick he think of. But what about the money, Captain? Could he have planted that? Well, I don't see how. He doesn't have a dime. Mm -hmm. And the pistol with the two shots fired from it? I can't explain that, Lieutenant. No, neither can we as yet. The ballistics experts will tell us all about the gun, and if the bodies of Ordway and Gates are recovered, we might be ready to issue a charge. Have you suspect they were shot before the boat blew up? That's possible. Better review your story, Captain. I've told you the truth. Well, I hope so, for your sake. Because if the gun is yours, and if its bullets killed Ordway and Gates... You face a charge of first-degree murder. Circumstantial evidence has convicted many accused persons. We seem to have such a situation here because of greed 
Ruth Ordway wished her husband dead, and Tony Rose seemed willing to make her wish come true. But greed also could have motivated Captain Hodges. His boat was insured. Money was found in his tackle box. So was a target pistol with two bullets discharged. I shall return shortly with Act Two. Motivation is the key word for Lieutenant Mike Phillips. And here, motivation seems to be greed. Of course, he may be a little ahead of himself. We won't know until the sally is raised and examined, whether it just blew up from old age or was sabotaged. And it's wrong to reach a conclusion without having the facts. One fact is certain, however. Mr. Ordway is dead, and probably at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. Lieutenant Phillips calls on his wife at 10 o'clock. Mrs. Ordway, Lieutenant Phillips, Detective Division. Come in. What are you detecting? You mean you haven't heard? It must have been on the news. Well, heard what? I've been out to dinner. The charter boat Sally blew up in the Gulf and sank. Oh, good Lord. My husband. You knew he was aboard. So soon. So sudden. Where is he? The Coast Guard is raising the boat. He may still be on board. Or he may be at the bottom of the Gulf. Ms. Ordway, I know this is a very poor time to ask any questions. No, no, it's your job. Please sit down. Thank you. Captain Hodges and uh, Mr. Perkins managed to get to shore. Oh, I'm so glad. What happened? Well, we don't know yet. There was an explosion and the boat sank. It was an old boat, you know. Yes, I know. My husband preferred it to his own yacht. I don't know why. He went fishing with Captain Hodges several times a week. He's an avid fisherman. Well, it wasn't so much the fishing. He and his friends fished a little, but they just liked to, you know, float along, have supper, drinks, and gamble. My husband was a poker nut, and he liked Hodges in his old tub. He did like Hodges, hmm? Oh, sure. Hodges amused him. What did he call him? A salty old tightwad. How about Tony Rose? Tony who? Tony Rose. I understand he's a close friend of yours. How dare you? My husband drowned and you come here and insinuate about me and that beach bum? I had to throw you out. We understand your husband had filed for divorce and was naming Tony Rose. That's what you understand? Well, you understand wrong. And I apologize, Mrs. Ordway. But Tony Rose was seen around Hodge's boat half an hour before she cast off. So what? Look, I'm sorry to upset you. I really came to tell you what had happened, to find out if your husband owned a twenty-two target pistol. A gun? How would I know if he had a gun? What's a gun got to do with him dead by drowning? We'd just like to check up on things like that. Okay. You've checked up. Now check out. <laughs> Ruth. Oh, Cal. I'm so glad you weren't killed. Well, you heard what happened? Yes, yeah, some cop told me. I know it's late, almost 11, but I just had to see you. And poor old Captain Hodges. I'm, I'm so glad he escaped. Don't waste any sympathy on Hodges. But I'm sorry for him. He lost all he's got, his boat. He didn't lose anything. He blew her up. What? Sure. The temptation was too big for him. You've lost me, Cal. Yeah. We've been going fishing with Hodges for a long time. He's seen the money we gamble with on the table, sometimes thousands of dollars. What do you suppose he thinks about standing on deck at the wheel? He sabotaged the Sally for the gambling money? And the insurance. Well, if Sally was an old tub, what better way to get a new boat? You... you know he blew her up? Yes. I saw him shove money into the tackle box under the seat of the dinghy. The gambling money? Well, that's what it had to be. What happened? Well, just before eight o'clock, I went up on deck for some fresh air. Hodges went down the hatch through the galley to the cabin where we'd been playing poker. There was a terrific explosion. A blast knocked me overboard. I swam to the dinghy and dragged myself into it. 
The next thing I knew, I heard Hodges yelling for help. Explain again about the money. Well, we just lay there in the dinghy for a few minutes, exhausted. I saw him reach into his jacket pocket. He was flat on his stomach and shove a wad of bills into the tackle box. Didn't you say anything to him? No. Well, I was afraid to because he had planned to kill all three of us. If I hadn't been on deck when the boat blew up, <laughs> I'd be dead, too. Oh, Kel. I never thought Captain Hodges would do a thing like that. Neither did I. In a way, uh, I'm sorry for him. Uh, but I'll have to tell the police what I saw. Uh, they probably know it already. Uh, yes, they don't think the boat just blew up. Are you really all right, Cal? Oh, sure. All I need is a good night's sleep. Yeah? Always. Hey, what do you want? It's only seven in the morning. You want to talk with us in the hallway? Okay, come in. What do you want? I'm still half asleep. Well, this ought to wake you up. We want to see you at headquarters. You... What, what for? You'll find out. You got a warrant? Is this a pinch? Put on some clothes and don't give us a hard time. Yeah, well, why not? What right? Tony, what were you doing sneaking around Clint Hodges' Sally at 3.30 yesterday afternoon? Sneaking? I was looking over the old tub. What for? It's a charter boat. The old pelican takes people fishing. Anything wrong with looking her over? No, not a thing. Unless at the same time you were able to stow some nitro and a timer in her hull. Huh? The Sally blew up. Last night? That's right. Killing Mr. Ordway and... Hey, how about that? You were rather friendly with Mrs. Ordway, weren't you? Uh, yeah. Ordway fired you because you couldn't keep your eyes off her, hey, didn't you? Man, what, what is this all about? You, you want to see my scrapbook and read my diary? You had a long talk yesterday afternoon with Dan at his gun and tackle shop. Well, why not? He's a pal of mine. He knows about nitro and explosive caps and timing devices, doesn't he? I'm sure he's not running a pet shop. So we put two and two together. Yeah, now, that... that what to and which to? Ordway fires you. He's suing his wife for divorce. She's still seeing you. If Ordway gets his divorce, she's left flat broke. But what if he dies? She's got the money and maybe you've got her. That's the two and two. And I blew up the Sally, huh? Me, huh? If anybody blew up the old crate, it was Captain Hodges. He accuses you. Well, he would. Why would I blow her up? For money. Ordway's dead. Don't tell me you won't benefit, Tony. You didn't ask Dan all those questions just to pass the time of day. You had a reason. You always have. We're not finished with you yet. Tony, what are you doing here at breakfast time? You shouldn't be here. It's dangerous. Now, the cops went over me about an hour ago. I thought we'd better talk. You, uh, know what's happened. Yes. You're a much cleverer young man than I gave you credit for. Where did you raise the money? The money? The two grand and change they found in Captain Hodge's tackle box in the dinghy. Oh, oh, that, um... What's wrong with you, Tony? I had a wish and you made it come true. I'll return the 2000 or so today and another 5000 for doing what you did. <laughs> hey, thanks, Tom. How did you do it? Mm, it's better you don't know. It's, it's done. How did you find out about the dough? Cal told me. Perkins? He knew about it? He saw Hodges take it out of his pocket and shove it into the tackle box. Oh, I see. Uh, and where did Hodges get the money? Well, according to Cal, from the table where the men were playing poker. I know how the money got into the tackle box, and so do you. You put it there. Did, um, uh, did, uh, Perkins know about what you had in mind? Oh, Lord, No. There wasn't any love lost between him and my husband, but Cal wouldn't hurt a fly. Well, why would he say he saw Hodges put the money into the tackle box? Uh, search me. It doesn't make sense. How could Hodges hide the money when it was already there? Hey, Dal. Is Cal Perkins covering for us? Are you sure you never told him you wanted to get rid of Ordway? No, no. I think what happened was he saw Hodges fooling around in the tackle box and saw the money... And just assumed Hodges had grabbed it from the poker game. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe it's good enough to convict Hodges. 
Was he uh, banged up? Worse than Cal Perkins, I guess. He almost drowned. The cops made some cracks about you and me. Who cares? They think you may have put me up to it. Well, they won't think so for long. It's up to Captain Hodges to explain that money, and Cal will swear he saw Hodges hide it. I'll have the money for you this afternoon. Mm, no rush. Wait till this all ties down. I'll take the money when they arrest the old pelican and put him in the can. Sorry to trouble you again, Captain Hodges. We've just spoken to Cal Perkins. Oh, a good man. Saved my life. I'm not so sure. Oh, what do you mean? Perkins tells a different story. He said the money in your tackle box was money from the gambling table. That you grabbed it and shoved it into the tackle box. What? Well, that's a downright lie. Gambling money? How in tarnation when I get my hands on that gambling money? When the boat blew, I was on the galley steps, and the next thing I knew, I was up to my neck in water. So you can't explain the money or the gun? I can't even tell you how the tackle box got into the dinghy. Unless Tony Rose put it there. Well, you both got my head spinning like a top, but I never stole a cent in my life, and Lord knows I'd never blow up Sally. She was my home, my life. Captain, where were Ordway and Gates when you went down the steps just before the explosion? Sprawled on the floor. Before the explosion? Uh, let me see. Mr. Ordway was slumped sideways in his chair, and Mr. Gates... Uh, <laughs> I think he was on the floor. Mm -hmm. He'd been drinking heavy. When the boat blew, Mr. Ordway was thrown on the underside of the table. Well, maybe they'd passed out. No, Captain. They were shot. When the Coast Guard raised your boat late last night, they found Ordway's body with a bullet in it. Ballistics is checking it against your target pistol. Oh, it's my gun. That's right. And two shots have been fired from it. But I told you I haven't used that gun in weeks. Tony Rose could have swiped the gun, fired two shots from it, and planted it in the money in the tackle box, except for one important point. Unless Tony Rose was aboard the Sally, how could he have murdered Ordway? You mean... You mean I shot those men and stole the money? Cal Perkins will swear that you put the money in the tackle box. Yeah, but... The gun and the two shots. We're checking the bullet to find out if it did come from your gun, Captain. And if it did... Yeah. I almost wish I'd gone to the bottom of the gulf with old Sally. Either Captain Hodges is a very convincing liar, or he faces life imprisonment for murder... Temptation was placed in his way. Is he guilty? Is Tony Rose at least guilty of blowing up the boat? We know that he couldn't have shot Ordway, but he might have sabotaged the Sally. As Lieutenant Phillips said, the police aren't finished with Tony Rose. I'll return shortly with Act Three. Last night at 8 o'clock, the charter boat Sally exploded a mile off Cay Marco near Sarasota. The Coast Guard has determined that the boat had been sabotaged. The story in the newspapers makes it clear that Captain Hodges destroyed his own boat. Worse, he is suspected of killing two men to steal their gambling money. It's late in the afternoon of the next day and Lieutenant Mike Phillips and Frank Engel are puzzling over the case. Where are we, Mike? All depends on the bullet, Frank. If it was fired from Captain Hodge's pistol, I'm afraid he's had it. I can't believe he'd do such a thing. Well, look, you know, he's nickeled and dimed all his life. Have a lot of time to think when you're floating around out in the Gulf, see all these rich guys day after day, gambling for more money than you make in a whole season, chartering trips. You might flip out. But he's a smart old bird. If he planned all this, would he screw it up the way he did? Why didn't he make sure Perkins was dead, too? Too bad we can't pin it on Tony Rose. But he was ashore. He couldn't have fired those shots. What was the printout on Perkins and Gates? Nothing there. Gates was married. Perkins got divorced years ago. He's important in Ordway's company. He'll be president now. That's a motive. No. 
Perkins already was number two man. Well, some guys like power. Now, Perkins is clean. He's lucky to be alive. If he planned to murder Ordway, you think he'd risk getting killed himself? And that money's got Clint Hodges by the throat. Yeah, the money. Money and love and love and money. Love? Where does love come in? Ruth Ordway. Guys go for her. Ordway, Tony Rose. Who else? There was dames like that, you know, scalp collectors. What if she had Perkins on the string? Sure. And that Fred Gates, too. Well, come down to earth, Mike. Lieutenant Phillips. Yeah. Now, oh, good work. It's a real break for Captain Hodges. Prepare a search warrant for me. I want to go through Ordway's apartment. <laughs> I don't see what this is going to prove, Mike. If Ordway was shot with his own gun, it's at the bottom of the gulf. You're probably right. Then what are we looking for? We'll give her another ring. Oh, you again. What do you want? We have a search warrant, Mrs. Ordway. What are you searching for? And who's this? Detective Engel. May we come in? I suppose so. What is this all about? It seems that the charter boat Sally didn't just blow up. It was sabotaged. And before the explosion, someone shot and killed your husband. What? Well, that's impossible. How could he have been shot? His body has been recovered, and we have the bullet. You mean Hodges shot him and grabbed the money before he blew up the boat? Money? What money is that, Mrs. The money Orwell? from the gambling table, of course. What do you mean, what money? Money from the gambling table? Don't act so stupid. The 2000 or so you found in the tackle box. You must have talked with Cal, Mr. Perkins. Didn't he tell you? Oh, that money. Cal saw Hodges put it there. That's why he knows that Hodges sabotaged his own boat. That's more than we know. What? Well, was there money in the tackle box? Sure. But it wasn't money taken from the gambling table. But it wasn't. Well, then where did it come from? We have some ideas about that. We haven't finished yet with Tony Rose. How do you know the money wasn't the gambling money? We know. Let's just leave it at that. Why do you ask, Mrs. Ordway? Because where else could it have come from? Well, we think Tony might have an idea. <sighs> Tony hasn't got a cent. But you have. Are you insinuating? Oh, no. That crack doesn't deserve... What are you here for? To look around. You can get to work, Frank. What's that box he's carrying? A fingerprinting kit. Now, which was your husband's room, Mrs. Ordway? I assume he had a room of his own. We had connecting rooms, smart guy. Okay, okay. What is all this about fingerprints? A twenty-two target pistol was found with the money. Two shots had been fired. The gun belongs to Captain Hodges. Well, what more do you want? The bullet taken out of your husband was fired from another pistol, probably his own. Now, I asked you last night if your husband owned a gun. And I told you I didn't know. So you told me, but he did have one. Captain Hodges said so. Your husband liked to take pot shots at a small buoy from the boat. You think he shot himself? No. Someone shot him. Hodges also told us that your husband's gun was missing. I doubt if he lost it. Somebody stole it, and maybe that somebody left his identification behind. And where's the gun now? You haven't got it, have you? It's at the bottom of the gulf. Maybe. Then you'll never be able to prove who shot him. Don't be too sure, Mrs. Ordway. There's other evidence from which you can make our deductions. I think I know what happened aboard the Sally. Now it's just a matter of dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Hodges, I've got good news for you. The bullet that killed Ordway was not fired by your gun. Oh, well, now, that's relief. Thank the good Lord. Whose gun fired the shot? We think it was Ordway's. You got it? No, it's gone, and for good. Let me ask you a question. Has anyone used your twenty-two recently? No, I don't think so. They'd ask. Unless it was snitched. Well, somebody took your gun and fired two shots from it and tried to frame you for murder. I had no good beach bum Tony Rose. No. Nope. He was on shore. If only we could recover Ordway's gun, we'd have an airtight case. Who murdered Mr. Ordway, Lieutenant? Same bum who blew up my boat? That's right, Captain. The same bum. 
Good work, Frank. Good work. That's what they took pot shots at, huh? Yeah, a cork buoy full of target bullets. Some are from Hodge's gun, but they're a bunch that match the bullet they dug out of Ordway. So even without the gun, we can match the bullets and say that Ordway was killed with his own gun. Good, Frank. Very good. And you were right about money and love and love and money or whatever it was you said. Those bullets and the stuff we found in the apartment will send him to the chair. Ordway wasn't fooled about Tony Rose for a minute. He knew Rose wasn't the guy after his wife. What are we waiting for? Yeah. Let's make the arrest. Hi, babe. You got the money for me? Bank closed at three. Oh, I've got something for you, you chiseling bum, but it isn't money. Hey, cool it. What's this about? Uh, you didn't blow up the Sally. Well, of course I didn't. Have you gone bananas? Captain Hodges blew up his old tub. Isn't that our story? <laughs> and isn't it worth the 2500 plus the 5000 bonus? You're a real dandy, Tony. You're still trying to con me. Oh, come on. You had a wish. I made it come true. Your husband's dead and Hodges gets life or goes to the chair. Happy ending for you and me. <laughs> What's the matter? You gone soft about Hodges? My husband wasn't killed in the explosion. Uh, come again? He was shot and killed with his own gun and then the boat blew up. Who says so? The cops? And they think they can prove it. They were here an hour ago with a search warrant. You know what else they said? The money found in the tackle box wasn't the gambling money. Well, of course it wasn't. I, I put it there. That's another lie. It was about 2000 not 2500 Where did you get two grand? And what did you really do? Nothing. You sneaked around the boat, but you didn't plant the money or hide the pistol. You didn't do anything. But this morning you were taking credit for all of it, and now you've got your hand out for $7,500. Get lost. Seven grand. That isn't much for my silence, doll. You're what? The cops know about me talking with Dan at the gunshot. What happens to you if they force me to tell them why I asked all those questions about nitro and caps? You would tell the cops I offered you money to kill my husband? Didn't you? You rotten lie. Maybe I planned it and didn't shoot your husband. If Clint Hodges didn't, who did? You know. And so do I. I don't. Sure you do. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? You and I plan to kill your husband at the same time your friend planned the same thing. <laughs> don't forget the money, babe. See you around. Mr. Perkins, you're under arrest. I'm... I'm what, Lieutenant? Anything that you say will be held against you. Under arrest? You're charged with shooting Ordway and blowing up Captain Hodge's boat, the Sally. You must be out of your minds. This is outrageous. What you did was outrageous. Killing two men and destroying the old captain's means of livelihood. And you almost got away with I it. I won't listen to any more of this. Get out of my room or I'll, I'll ring for the nurse and she'll throw you out. When you planted that money in the tackle box, why didn't you soak it first? Who, what are you talking about? You said Hodges took the money out of his pocket and shoved it into the tackle box. Hodges was soaking wet. The money should have been too, but it was dry. And what about the bullet we dug out of Ordway? Well, he's at the bottom of the gulf. You wish. The Coast Guard recovered Ordway's body. The bullet that killed him came from his own target pistol, which you stole from his bedroom. His gun case had some good fingerprints on it, Mr. Perkins. Yours. Under the case, we found some correspondence. The letters begin, Dearest Ruth. And you... You read them? We're dealing with murder. You loved Ordway's wife. And you wanted his job as president of the company. I'll talk to you through my lawyer. All right, but we know what happened. You went below when you came aboard the Sally. That's when you planted the explosive and the timing device. Sometime earlier, you'd stolen Captain Hodge's pistol and fired two shots. You planted his gun and the money in the tackle box and the dinghy. Maybe the night before. You'd also stolen Ordway's pistol. You were below. Just before the boat was supposed to blow up, you shot Ordway and Gates and rushed up on deck. Captain Hodges went below and the explosion occurred. He escapes through the hole in the side of the hull and comes to the surface. You rescue him in the dinghy? 
and row the two of you ashore. Why didn't you leave him to the sharks, Mr. Perkins? I don't know. I planned to have all three die, but when I was floating around in the water, I realized if only I survived, I might be suspected. Because of the divorce suit by Ordway naming you? Mm. So you know that, too. Mm Mm-hmm. Was Tony Rose involved in this scheme? Tony, oh, good heavens, no. I used him as a decoy. wonder why Tony spent yesterday afternoon in Dan's gun shop asking questions about explosives. He... He what? Oh, my Lord. Meaning you think what we think. Tony was planning his own sabotage of the ship. With Mrs. Ordway's money. Leave her out of this. Looks like you just beat him to it, Mr. Perkins. He... He and Ruth, they... They had a plan. Is is that what you think? Could be. I think we should go down to headquarters. You can't prove I shot Ordway. I think we can. I hurled his gun into the gulf. The bullet in Ordway's body proves it came from his gun. But you can't prove that without the gun. Yes, we can. Matching bullets were taken out of a cork buoy that he used to shoot at for target practice. And you know the rest. Fingerprints, love letters... You loved Ordway's wife and you wanted his job. Those were your motives. So, Ruth and that beach boy... Was he more than just a decoy, Mr. Briggins? I often wondered. You're going to have a lot of time to think that over. For lack of a shoe, a horse is lost, and so on. If Ordway's body had not been found, the circumstantial evidence against Captain Hodges might have convicted him. But if is a big word. Greed, ambition, and infatuation, those were the motivating words in this tragic story. The plan was an ingenious one, but the person who plans a murder nearly always makes a slip. And so Mr. Perkins was caught. I'll be back shortly. is destructive. Infatuation addles the mind. Ambition, within reasonable limits, is admirable, but excessive ambition, like any excess, is monstrous. As the philosopher said, ambition inflames the mind and puts it into a violent hurry of thought. Mr. Perkins was the victim of all three excesses, and he paid the price for them. Thank goodness he did. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Terry Keene, Robert Dryden, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.